Hello from wherever you are, and welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarland, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. This time, we go back to the Industrial Revolution and transportation games. This will be one of those times where you're encouraged to participate with your friends, block them off, and create your own industrial roadway empire. This is Ticket to Ride. Let's get stuck in. So this is one of my favorite games in the respect of no one will get knocked out. I love the kind of games that everyone still has a chance to stay in. This game is actually preposterously simple to set up. And uh, this is courtesy of the board game collection from National Public Library. And we have quite a few things in this container. First of all, we've got enough for five players. Blue, green, red, black, and yellow. We also have tokens, which we'll get to in a moment, and some spares. There's always some left over, but there should be 45 train cars. Uh, I'll pull them out in a minute so you can get a better visual of them, but there are 45 of these for each. We also have part of the object of the game and our board. So we'll go ahead and put this off to the side for now. It's always the wrong way every time. But we also have these two sets of cards. We're gonna have uh, 20 of these. These are destination cards. This is part of the object of the game. Your goal is, and I'll show you the map in more detail here in a moment, you're gonna take these cards, I'm actually gonna flip some of this over. Each of them have routes. And this is gonna be uh, American cities as well as Canadian cities for connecting. So uh, just a limited amount of US geography is required, but it shows you visuals as well as the names of where you're going for. So this is Denver, so in Colorado, and El Paso, which is in uh, Texas near the Mexican border. And it's gonna be worth four points. So your goal is, if you have this Denver to El Paso card, is as whatever player you are, to connect through your tokens from Denver to El Paso. And it does not have to be the most direct way. So let's look at another one. Another Texas one for you. Dallas, Texas to New York City. Again, you can go all the way around the board as long as at some point you have a completely connected railroad from Dallas, Texas to New York City, New York. Now let's find one that's a bit more across because as you can tell, we have quite a few of these. Ah, here's one. Vancouver, Canada to Montreal, Canada. So we are going all the way across from Ontario to British Columbia. And notice how it's worth 20 points compared to the Dallas to New York 11 and the Denver to El Paso 4. So in part of this game, you're gonna be figuring out how ambitious do you want to be versus how many do you want to connect because you only get the points for connecting the roadways. So we're gonna get, put these off to the side just for a moment while I pull out these. This is how you generate the ability to place items on railways. And let's go ahead and pull out our map. Because as you can guess, it's fairly expansive. Now, we're gonna take this in small pieces. So that way we can kind of work together through it. So first off, I'm gonna go east to west. And then I'll talk about north to south a little bit. Notice how it's a pretty crowded system, but all of these have particular connections. So Montreal, Toronto, Duluth, Minnesota, Helena, Montana, and Seattle, Washington would be a connected east to west railway. So if you had 
Montreal to Seattle worth a certain number of points and connected all of those with, let's say, green tokens, you would be able to build that roadway. Easy enough, right? Here's where the colors come into play. Each of these cards are gonna have particular colors on them. So I'm gonna put just a couple examples here, try and get all of them. White and blue. So notice how pretty much the entire rainbow spectrum is covered here. We've got blue, green, white, red, pink, yellow, green, and black, as well as these. This is a multicolored token that is basically a wild card. What you're gonna do is, as you play through this game, you're gonna generate a certain number of colors. So let's say we're trying to do Chicago, Illinois to Duluth, Minnesota. You would need a combination of colors and wild cards. Being able to place them down so let's say you're playing as green. Forgive me, I'm bringing my favorite color into this. You would be able to play these and say, okay, I have this railway connected. You're only able to do one on your turn. So you can either pick up cards or place railways, but you can only do one. And part of the game here is gonna be when we dole out uh, railways at the beginning, no one knows what railways they have or not. But it does mean that no one can take this any longer. And this is where the two layers of points we have come in. First off, the train length, and secondly, the route completion. So let's look at this train length here for a moment. A single railway, so Nashville, Tennessee to Atlanta, Georgia, or uh, Vancouver, British Columbia to Seattle, Washington are one links. They're worth one point. But notice where they are within the map. We'll take a closer look at the map here in a minute. Notice some others here. They may have the same colors that are twos. Those are worth two points. This three point that we put is worth four. These fours, for example, Atlanta, Georgia to New Orleans, Louisiana is worth seven points. This five from Atlanta, Georgia to Miami, Florida is worth 10 points. And then our large ones here, obviously this plays a huge element to the game is the six. There's quite a few of them, especially as you start getting out west. That's worth 15 points. So this is where it starts getting competitive. I will go ahead and clear this off for now, and I will finish getting everything set up. But at its core, what we're doing here is trying to collect as many routes as well as complete those routes, being able to take multiple of these long railways so for example, if you are able to get uh, Portland to El Paso and take over here, that's a five stretch. That's worth 10 points. Los Angeles to El Paso, that's worth 15, that's 25. And then four points right here, so 29 points. At the same time, let's say that you did it through Portland to El Paso, but went this direction. So there'd be 15 then a three, so that's four, so 19, then 21, then 23. So it's fewer points, but as long as it gets you your route, that is the more important part here. Especially once you start completing your routes, you are going to be able to get more cards along the way. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get the board fully set up for all five of our players here in a moment. And then I will show you the first couple of turns and then give you more ideas as to how this works. One second. So a little bit about the time period because I always like trying to add some of that. Let's kind of clear off the board and let's look 
uh, all the way across the country here. Now, notice that we have a rather interconnected set of roadways. You are going to see the development across the mid 19th century as railroads come into more prominence, um, starting from the east and going west. In the American Civil War, railroads play a key element into how Union forces end up being able to travel forces further compared to the Confederacy that did not have the same railroad structure. Um, it was on the order of seven to one plus, especially by the end of the American Civil War. But as the war ended, more of these railroads started to be interconnected down into the south and outward to the west. Because remember by the mid to late 19th century, California is already a state. We're already moving all across to where by the 1870s, we have our first interconnected transcontinental railroad. But don't worry, there was some competition. More on that in a second. So welcome back. I've got the board set up. So I have four blue, red, yellow, black, and green. I've given them four of these train cards each and three of these destination cards. So we're gonna go in a row, take a look at it, see what we've got. So our blue player has a black, yellow, blue, and a Technicolor. And they've got Helena, Montana to Los Angeles, California. Montreal, Canada to Atlanta, Georgia. Montreal to New Orleans. This is actually a pretty good draw because if you have ones that are next to each other, this is a good starting spread to where, let's say as you're going through the game, you may have to go a little around, but if you can go Atlanta through New Orleans, you're gonna be well on your way. What it also means is see that Atlanta and New Orleans have two railway connectors. If your end goal is to get all the way up here, you may want to prioritize certain things in the early game. The more routes you can claim, the better off you are, especially if you can stop somebody else. All right. Our red player has black, blue, and two oranges. Not a bad draw especially considering Las Vegas to Salt Lake City needs only one more orange. And there is an orange in play. Uh, Chicago to Pittsburgh, same instance. New York to Washington can be claimed right now if they wanted to. They've got Winnipeg to Houston, which is down here in the center, but it is all the way down. Definitely an excursion, but they've got a black, they've got a blue, not as much help north-south though. They've got that Denver to El Paso that I mentioned. Notice how it's kind of off to the side, but if you have to, for example, go through this blue segment and then green segment, you're gonna be trying to do this anyways and then hoping to get lucky through this green segment right here. Also, this green segment becomes in play. Remember how I talked about going from Portland to El Paso might score you a lot of points? Los Angeles to Miami, you have to go all the way across the board. And there's one, two, three, six group segments in this one. So not the best spread, but manageable. If you are able to successfully do that, you're well on your way. Our yellow player has yellow, pink, black, and red. And their routes are Vancouver to Santa Fe, so up here to down here, get this all scooched out of the way. We have another Vancouver to Montreal. So these are some high points, but obviously it's gonna take a lot of work. You've gotta go all the way down the map and all the way over the map, as well as New York to Atlanta. Now let's look at our black player. They've got red, yellow, orange, and blue. And then Los Angeles to Chicago, Seattle to Los Angeles, and Winnipeg to Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, Winnipeg is obviously covered by the uh, yellow pieces right now, but 
not the best draw. I will absolutely concede this one is, black is probably the worst set of draws so far, mostly because they have to go three separate directions. At least for our yellow player, they have two starting destinations and can try and go all the way. Now let's look at our green player. They've got two pinks, a red, and a white. And they've got Chicago to Santa Fe. They've got Salt St. Marie to Oklahoma City and Salt St. Marie to Nashville. So notice up here, there's no directly Southern way. So it's gonna involve at least one, two, three, four connections. But if you can get to Nashville, Nashville to Oklahoma City is relatively reachable. You can also get Salt St. Marie to Oklahoma City and then over. This is going to look a jumbled mess by the end of the game, but that's half the fun. Since nobody knows what they're dealing with, I'm gonna have everybody keep their respective pieces. I'm gonna move these off the board, just so you can see all of the various routes that we're looking for. And we're just gonna take this slowly, but hopefully by the end of the game, you'll be able to see a little bit as to how some of this begins to work. Oh, black's kind of like stuck in the corner here. Ugh. So what I'm gonna do is on your turn, you've got three options. Claim a route, draw cards, or draw destination cards. At any point in the game, you can use your turn to draw destination cards. So just for the sake, I'm gonna go ahead and say we're drawing destination cards. Obviously this carries some risk, especially if you can't get them. These are subtracting points. You want to make sure that you're only getting routes that you can complete. So we've got Seattle to New York. That's a haul. Calgary to Phoenix, Arizona. Portland to Phoenix, Arizona. If you draw cards, you have to keep one, at least. You are welcome to keep two or all three, depending on how things are going. So I'm gonna keep these at the top, just so we have in mind what is going on. Also, the longest railway gets 10 bonus points. Uh, forgot to mention this one, the Transamerica Express one. It's only for the one with the most connected railway. Uh, similar to Settlers of Catan having the longest road, longest railroad comes into play here. So let's see what we're gonna do here as blue. Now, you've got the option to draw two total color cards or one if it's the bonus card. Now, here's one of the biggest important suggestions I can give as to how you play this game. Draw them one at a time because you don't have to say, I need black and orange and be done. Let's say you need two black you get the black one, and then this next card, if it's a black, you can take it as well. So take cards one at a time. So we're probably gonna start near Montreal. I don't, I don't necessarily have any two connectors or three connectors. Uh, I know that I'm gonna need, what color do I probably need the most? Probably need the blue the most right now, uh, just to get myself at least to New York. Uh, that opens some options for me to get down. So I'm gonna take the blue, and we're gonna flip this card over, and it's a red. So the black and orange example I gave earlier, you wouldn't get lucky, but you would still then have the orange. So you need to look for what colors you have. You're not gonna be able to place anything, so what else do you need? You've got Helena to Los Angeles, so you need an orange at some point. Do you need a Black? Yes, we're gonna take this other black because we need this New York to Washington route as well. So, simple, just turning over cards and thinking about where I'm gonna go. So Winnipeg, Winnipeg, and I've got, i make sure I have this out. I've got two of the oranges, so that's not bad. Um, I could get this Denver to Kansas City next turn if I get two of the oranges if I wanted, which may not be the worst idea. It's also trying to consider how do I get from Winnipeg to anywhere else? So let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna take these two oranges for now. 
because part of the game as well can be a little bit of subterfuge. And yes, I know I totally just violated the rule of do it one card at a time, but I knew I needed those two oranges. So uh, from here, it moves on to yellow. So notice how we're getting some of the colors, at least at the beginning, to get combinations. Uh, Vancouver. Vancouver is pretty stuck. But I would like some cards to begin with, just so I can start building. But what do you build off of? Uh, I could take the red and see if I can start building a combination there. I really need to start probably building those whites. Uh, white is one of the things that I would look out for, just because if I can get to Winnipeg, that opens up some options. So let's see, I'm gonna at least take the red, give myself some twos. Mm, do I need anything immediately with the pink? No, not really. So I'll take this other red. Now for the black player, uh, Los Angeles comes into play a fair amount. So I know that I need the pink ones or the yellow ones. I think I'm gonna go for that. We'll go for the yellow one. I didn't get lucky there, but I also will need other colors here in a moment. Just trying to think of from Los Angeles, how quickly can I start building up? I'll go ahead and get this pink and try and go for this five right here. Now we go to green. So notice how I have not placed a single piece yet, but I have started planning out my route. Notice how I've mentioned certain railways certain times. This is gonna come up where you are trying to figure out where to go. Now, I'm thinking the center. Kansas City comes into play a fair amount. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Kansas City, Salt St. Marie. That requires triplicate ones. Hmm. Now is where you start deciding. I'm gonna go in place. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna take these two, uh, pink, this will be our discard. And I'm gonna place one rail. And then because of that, we know it's two. So I'm gonna take my green marker and just move it to the two. Simple enough, right? And that is actually the end of my turn. I don't get to draw any cards. That is the only thing that happens. So we'll keep going and see what happens next. So now we get to decide. At Montreal, I think I'll go and play. And that will be that Montreal to New York connection. That's worth four points. Uh, red, what are they gonna do? I think that Denver to Kansas City now that you've got options here, um, you have to figure out where you're gonna go for some of this. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna be a little more, probably a little more aggressive with building than I normally would, uh, just because I want to show you how quickly this board fills up. Remember, this is a four length. So for red, that's worth seven. For yellow, let's see. I'll go ahead and play those three reds and take that uh, Vancouver to Calgary roadway. So that's another four. And black here is really starting to decide what to do. Because now what options are still there to you? Here's probably one of the biggest air quotes risks at this juncture. Notice that Los Angeles to Salt Lake City is only one roadway and can only be claimed by one person. If you're trying to go this way and somebody can block you, they can, as long as the roadway has been claimed. That's it, there's only so much you can do. Let's see what else is around here for their... They got blues. Hmm. 
Do they need yellows? Kind of. Mm. I think it's kind of worth it to take the risk at this point and take some of the colors. Uh, what other color do they need? Winnipeg. Let's take that other blue. So see how this game goes fairly quickly once you start drawing and figuring out what you're aiming for, what you're needing. Obviously now it's time to that you've placed. All right, where do I need to go? Uh, so you're in St. Louis, Nashville is two away. But also consider the longest road is just the continuous element. So maybe if you wanted to do Nashville to Pittsburgh and up to Toronto and Salt St. Marie, that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. If you split things, we have to go by the longest continuous amount. So you're making some decisions on where you're gonna go. So I'm thinking with the white here, take, oh, sorry. I'm gonna take this white. I'm gonna start aiming for Chicago. And then I'll take this other white one. This is where things start to uh, rotate, become a little more complex. Uh, part of this is also having a straight face just so you can not give away that you kind of needed that location. So give me a minute. I'm gonna advance a little bit further in the game so you can see when it starts getting really complex and we can start seeing some points being given for route completed. Hold on a second. As I said, there was some competition for the first transcontinental railroad. This is also where good board game design comes into play. Notice that on the center of the board from San Francisco to New York, there are a series of interconnected competing railways with different colors on them. This is a pretty close reflection into how railroad structures developed. Most of them were concurrently run by their own businesses, privatized, uh, none of them were really nationalized or trust busted until almost the Roosevelt administration. I mean the Teddy one. So notice how there's the competition here and you could actually have two players competing along that same road trying to do a New York to San Francisco. Uh, up until the invention of you know, really good air conditioning, Los Angeles is not as much a city as prominence as San Francisco is out to the west during this time period. But notice also we have New York to New Orleans, which is one of the largest trade hubs for this time period. We also have all the way from Houston to Duluth. So we have a lot of good competing maps. And this is where once somebody was able to get control over a large area, they could impact the transport of goods, the transport of people, the transport of material of all sorts, and make a huge profit off of it. So I advanced a little further and let's get you back caught up. Uh, notice that blue is trying to take some of the area over here. Yellow is trying to make these long connections. That's gonna take a hot minute, but it's still worth trying just because it keeps your options relatively open. Red is fairly committed to the bit over here. Uh, black has kind of been stuck in with not having a lot of cards for their exact destination here, but they're working with what they got right now. Uh, green is still kind of covering the center. So the first thing I wanted to cover is what happens when you complete a route. Now, so red here is gonna claim the Santa Fe to El Paso. I'm gonna discard these two and they are going to advance by two. This is one of the important things. You've now completed a route if you're red. You know it, the other players do not. You should keep it that way. Why? Because now they know that you've completed a route. They also know how many points you've scored. And they also know that they can only take so far and it changes how they play their game. 
you want to play your game and now you're focusing on a couple of things. Getting from Winnipeg to Houston, which is a bit more manageable now, um, you're probably gonna wanna go for this four and this one right here. You also have to go through this Omaha, Duluth, Winnipeg, and then you also need to start looking at how are you gonna get from Los Angeles to Miami? That one might be a haul. So from here, play is gonna continue on as normal. So give me a second, play a little bit further on, get to some of these longer routes. Hold on a second. So I advanced a little bit further, just so I can highlight some concepts about the way that the game will end up flowing usually. So let's take a look. Notice that yellow over here is almost completed all the way to the top. Now they wanna go for the longest roadway. However, notice that black has blocked from Winnipeg. Notice that anybody with a Winnipeg is now in some trouble because in order to actually get there, you would have to, I'm trying to find a way for you. Um, you'd have to go all the way along the top. That would be the only way. So notice that green, which had the Salt St. Marie, would have to go New York, Montreal, and Salt St. Marie just to complete their route because otherwise they're completely blocked. This is where, as the game evolves, it gets a little crowded. Notice that red has really built out of the Denver area, but where do they have to expand? So things will get a little more uh, tight. Notice that green has drawn at least one more ticket, and that's that Seattle to New York, because two of their routes involve Salt St. Marie. They have to get over there. There's really no choice. Um, Otherwise, they're going to lose out on at least 17 points. But they put themselves in a very uncomfortable position. Now they have to get all the way to Seattle before the end of the game, which is possible from this current situation in about two routes. Uh, this Omaha to Helena, Helena to Seattle. This is where the railroads get a little twisty, windy, and the competition for longest road is going to be rather fierce especially if yellow is able to connect because right now blue is the only one that's made it all the way across to anywhere. They're aiming for Miami, especially if now that they've gotten these, you can see them trying to do Helena to Los Angeles the long way because really there's only so many directions you can go to try and get there. But that's half the fun. This is Ticket to Ride. One more thing that was actually really good game design. This also relatively mirrors the population as it was during the time period. There was a lot of need to transport from New York to San Francisco across the continent. However, uh, Helena, Montana does not have as many people as, for example, Atlanta does. Atlanta needs five connecting points. Helena has six, but notice how it's more intended to get to another destination. No offense to the people of Montana, I promise you. But this is part of the way that international roadways developed and also pretty closely mirrors once we get to the highway system of roads after automobiles really start taking off. This is pretty close to how concurrently roadways developed just in slightly different ways with slightly different locations. But this is really good map design as well as a good teaching tool, by the way, for anyone looking to learn about the time period and development of the railway system. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check out more board games like this as a part of National Public Library's board game collection. We've got a selection of over a hundred board games to choose from. Also, check out our YouTube playlist of all of the episodes of Let's Play Games. Look out for us on our schedule airing on NECAT on channel nine and channel 10 and look out for other great NPL Universe content out there. I'll see you next time.